And will the clerk please call roll? Thank you, Chair. Councilmember Kim Daughtry. Here. Councilmember Joe Marine. Here. Councilmember Jared Mead. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Tom Merrill. Here. Thank you. Mayor John Nearing. Here. Thank you. Labor Representative Lance Norton. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Sid Roberts. Here. Thank you. Councilmember Jan Schwedy. Here. Thank you. Mayor Nicholas Smith. Present. Thank you. Councilmember Stephanie Wright. Here. Thank you. Chair, we do have a quorum. I'll also take roll call for alternates. Councilmember Gallagher. Here. Oh, thank you. Uh, do we have Councilmember Johnson? Mayor Wright, Mayor Matsumoto Wright. Councilmember McNeil. Here. Oh, thank you. Uh, and then council member Nearing. Thank you, chair. That concludes roll call. Thank you. Uh, next we move on to public comment. We, for the record, have received one written comment from Mr. Joe Kunzler that has been received and provided to the board. Hope you all got that. Uh, there are no speakers signed up in advance. If anyone is on with us right now that would like to make a public comment, we ask that you now raise your hand, the feature that's under your participants button to indicate you would like to comment. If you have uh, joined us by phone, press pound nine to raise your hand. Are there any public comments? Chair, I'm not seeing one and anyone indicate they'd like to speak. One more call for public comments. Anyone? Hello. Hello. Oh. Mr. Kunzler. Thank you. I hope everyone can hear me today. Yep, we can hear um, you. This was a test of the raised hand feature, but good afternoon. It's good to see everyone. Um, this was a game time decision, as they say in the NFL, but uh, I'm here. I'm not, you know, something about core tran community transits values of integrity or we believe in always doing the right thing for the right reasons of being honest to each other so that we may continue to build or maintain trust and quote also the community transit core value of service focused or quote all that we do in service to our community our customers and each other end quote i don't see holding a board strategic alignment and capital development As in compliance with those values, I just respectfully do not. You hopefully have all read my admonition in the Everett Herald letters page today. I hope today this chair will accept my dare to start a new era and call a vote and about simply instructing the world-class community transit staff to record these meetings and put them on YouTube, please. Ditto tweeting out your board meeting agendas, please. Align our policies, practices, and resources so everyone has genuine opportunities to fully participate and thrive. End quote. Community transit, I speak from a place of love when I say you are at your best, at your boldest. See Swift BRT, see what you've done the past year of online meetings and how that became the blueprint for what I've worked with Representative Wicks on uh, ESHB 1329. I ask you please support the bill. Um, at your best, at your Community transit. I spent my morning getting unmuted to tear into Sound Transit for having a secret meeting to sign a letter to rate our state's meager WSU to mobility grants. My answer to that is a no. We need those grants. Twenty million dollars may not make a much may not make Sound Transit come faster to effort, or even, um, you know, pain field. But twenty million dollars can do a lot of good for community transit, scattered transit, and so on. I hope now you understand I have to be equally tough on everyone and I continue to support community transit and its staff. Thank you for taking this admonition and hopefully the polite way it was intended. Also, my Zoom is acting up. 
So you may need to do something to it, <clears throat> but I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kunzler. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, this is Labor Representative Lance Norton. Can I speak uh, to Mr. Kunzler on behalf of myself and the board, perhaps? Uh, go ahead, Mr. Norton. Thank you. Mr. Kunzler, as you know, I'm the Labor Representative. You have always been treated with the utmost dignity and respect you have never been silenced or ignored, even when you don't know, I'm sorry, what you're talking about. But I was shocked to read your article in the Herald on the letters to the editor today. I have been on this board here at Community Transit for a number of years, and also Island Transit, and I have the deepest respect for both agencies, board members, CEOs, and staff. You have, as I've said, always been listened to and treated with the deepest respect. Both agencies welcome public, welcome the public attending regular board meetings, public comment, etc. I have, before retirement, spent 45 years in public transportation. I achieved 3 million mile safe driver award. I was elected president of the largest transit union in the west of Chicago. Nine years before retiring, I continued to learn so much of how so many good, honest people on transit boards administration staffs, managers, and employees work so hard to make these agencies the best there is. And I think you were a little over the top here, Mr. Kunzler, on your criticisms, and I was shocked, as I said. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Norton. Okay, one more call out for public comment. Anybody may, else? May I, may I respond? Uh, no, Mr. Kunzler, you've already had your time. Thank you. I found uh -huh. that letter very, very necessary because this is a committee meeting at the. Okay, we'll try one more time for other public comment. Thank you very much. Anybody else raise their hand or pound nine on your phone? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move. Next will be uh, the presentations, I think. Is that right? Am I in the right place? <laughs> All right. First presentation today is the Green Roads Award for Seaway Transit Center Green Roads Foundation. Rick. Great. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's great to be here today. We've got a theme uh, to start our meeting uh, with some celebrations and recognitions. Um, it's an honor today to have the Green Roads Foundation with us to recognize the Seaway Transit Center for its environmentally sustainable elements and design and, and impacts. Um, the Green Roads Foundation was established a decade ago as a globally recognized nonprofit to, that advances sustainability education and in, initiatives for transportation infrastructure. We are very excited that the design and development of the Seaway Transit Center has been recognized by the foundation. Uh, two years ago, the transit center opened to riders. It's kind of hard to believe that two years has gone by so quickly. Um, the opening of the transit center was a milestone for our system because it provided easy walk access for Boeing employees and connectivity to significant locations along the Green Line, uh, including Payne Field, Canyon Park Manufacturing Center in Bothell, connection with the Blue Line at Airport Road in 99. From the very beginning, this facility was designed to meet the highest environmental standards. And those standards put forth by the Green Roads Foundation. So I'm pleased to introduce the president and CEO of Green Roads, Geraldine Lee Anderson, to present this award. So over to you, Ms. Anderson. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Elgenfrith, and hello to the board of directors and greetings, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you so much for having us here today. Uh, again, my name is Jerry Anderson. I'm the president and CEO of the Sustainable Transportation Board, also known as Green Roads Foundation. This is recent news for us. And here with me today are my communications coordinator, Janice Cantieri and Jesse Thompson, the chairman of our board of directors as well. I think they're in the background here, but they're also watching from the wings. I understand there was a presentation we had as well. Thank you, Ms. Woods. 
Um, so we are here to, today to recognize Community Transit Seaway Transit Center in Everett, Washington, which earned silver certification in 2020 at the end, right on Christmas Eve was when that was completed. So uh, we're pleased to welcome our very first certification of the year uh, for Seaway Transit Center. So thank you. Uh, the $13.8 million transit center project met all 12 Green Roads project requirements, which are the baseline for what we consider to be a sustainable transportation project and earned 50 points in our voluntary categories, becoming the number two transit center to earn Green Road certification in the world. And the first, of course, being the Smoky Point Transit Center for Community Transit. So um, lots of wins lined up here for Community Transit, of course. And if you'd like to go to the next slide, I don't have any particular, uh, just so some beautiful pictures of this transit center. And I'll talk a little bit about the team. So we've uh, really appreciated the project team's commitment early on. Uh, we started working with this team early in 2015 uh, to start getting the project um, registered and onboarded. And we've been working with them since. So this has been wonderful. And their commitment to equity for transportation and sustainability has shined through from start to finish. Um, here are a few of those highlights. The Seaway Transit Center is the north terminus for Community Transit Swift Green Line, also our very favorite color bus rapid transit line, uh, providing frequent and reliable service between Boeing Field and Bothell's Canyon Park Technology Center, a perfect fit for the Seattle metro area. The uh, transit center also features state-of-the-art sheltered facilities with bike racks and sidewalks that are separated from traffic with landscape buffers, providing safe and convenient connections for pedestrians and cyclists. And let's see what the next photo looks like here. Oh, beautiful. Those were the safe and convenient connections for pedestrians and bicyclists, beautiful sidewalks. Um, maybe the next slide too. Those are the shelter facilities. Wonderful. Okay. One of the main, main project's main sustainability features is an underground stormwater detention vault that processes stormwater runoff to improve water quality before it enters the nearby wetland sanctuary. And just some numbers to take home from, from that um, in terms of reducing water pollution at the project site. Um, we've the Smoky Point, I'm sorry, the Seaway Transit Center treats over 1.6 acres of uh, land surrounding the project to a level of 90% removal of pollutants, um, plus a high removal of both metals and uh, phosphorus. Uh, chemicals. So wonderful um, improvement to water quality. Great work. The team also planted non-invasive trees that will increase the canopy area and provide a nice space for people uh, around that area when they're visiting the transit center and moving from A to B. Um, finally, one more slide, I think. Oh, that's our last celebration that we had with you. <laughs> Uh, the long life pavement of this facility actually designed something is designed to last a lifetime, uh, 40 years, which actually saved community transit 8.5% of total lifetimes costs. So also a win for uh, an economically designed facility that is uh, something that will be here for future generations to enjoy. So congratulations to community transit. We wish that we could be there with you to celebrate. So I did bring my sign for you and we can pretend maybe if we have a screenshot we can take a picture and pretend that we're all here enjoying it <laughs> and this will go up on our social media page so we can celebrate with you and see they did that in the photo here so congratulations so much to the community transit team and also the design team led by Pertit and prime contractor interwest construction so give yourselves a hand congratulations on your beautiful silver certified seaway transit center Yay, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so yeah. much, <clears throat> Geralee. I, I do wish, I think we all wish that we could gather in person to, to celebrate this. And uh, I know that there's a time coming soon where we'll be able to do that. But this yeah. means a lot, um, you know, particularly because the transportation sector is, is the largest contributor uh, to greenhouse gas emissions. So it's the place we have the most work to do as a community. And, and we're just really happy to be part of that um solution I, I think it's also important to point out that great projects like this don't happen without a great team uh, so i also want to call out the staff and recognize them um, we had on point uh, for for our team dan jerome and molly deerdorf 
Mm -hmm. uh, and they were also supported by uh, David True, Greg Stamatio, and Todd Jacobs, and of course, all of them working under the capable leadership of uh, Roland Behe and June Duvall and my predecessor, Emmett Heath. So uh, a shout out to all the staff who, who worked on the project. And um, I want to thank the Green Roads Foundation for giving us this recognition and taking the time to celebrate with us today. We will have to take a rain check after uh, without masks someday. Um, right. we'll come up and take some. We'll, we'll come up and visit for sure. Sounds great. Thank you thank so you. much. It's thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great meeting. Thank you. Take care. Okay, so next on our agenda is the 2020 Employee Awards, uh, Mr. Engelfritz and Mayor John Nering. Great. Um, so continuing with the theme of the day, uh, celebrating, um, I want to take some time here to recognize our 2020 uh, award winners uh, on the staff. And it's really critically important we do that uh, this year in recognition of the tough year we've had. It really has been uh, a unique year for everybody. Um, nobody really saw this coming and, and the work this agency had to do to adjust and respond to the public health crisis was really, really something. And um, it meant a lot of people doing a lot of amazing work. Um, so everybody who works at Community Transit has contributed to a strong performance this year and keeping each other safe uh, keeping our families safe, keeping our customers safe. Uh, so it's it's notable to take a moment here and, and celebrate, in particular, some key individuals uh, who, who, who displayed uh, excellent and exemplary work. Um, so the first thing I want to do is, is mention our, our nine um, award winners uh, who, who won excellence awards. Um, for various contributions to the agency. And I won't read all of their citations, uh, but I did want to name them because of the contributions they made uh, over the course of the year. We held a uh, celebration a few weeks back where we met with each, each award winner and presented them with their awards and recognized them and disseminated that information out to, to the rest of the agency. But Leah Blanchard, Kara Brox, Todd Burris, Jay Heim, Charlene Kruger, uh, Matthew Muller, Don Smith, Mark Tucci, and Landon Williams uh, were our nine uh, Excellence Award winners for the year. So we want to recognize them and thank them for their contributions. Uh, but we really want to focus today on recognizing our CEO Award winners and our, and our Chairs Award winner. So let's start with our first CEO award winner, um, and that is Karen Hill, who is a coach operator. Uh, Karen is not only a coach operator, but she is our longest tenured coach operator and the senior most coach operator uh, in the ATU uh, 1576. Um, and she's a remarkable member of our team. Uh, she exemplifies dedication to customers, to her colleagues, to the community. She is a volunteer extraordinaire outside of community transit to causes and activities throughout the community. Um, with her tenure, her experience, and her generous spirit, she's an invaluable resource to her peers, her co-workers, free, freely sharing her knowledge, skills, tips of the trade uh, that she's gained through her experience over the course of the, the time she's worked. Um, there are not many coach operators who can tout the kind of safe record uh, that she has uh, for as long as she has done this. Um, and, you know, she has been not only a, a safe driver, but a key participant in our safety team and our accident review committee. Uh, in 2020, she received her 29 year safe driving award from the National Safety Council, and that's a, a really well deserved honor uh, and makes all of us very proud. Uh, in addition to being at the top of her class as a professional driver, uh, she's always cared for others here at work and in the community, as I mentioned. Uh, it wasn't an easy year uh, with the pandemic, but she displayed the highest level of professionalism and support for her colleagues and helped as a key player in keeping essential service available. 
uh, for the community. Uh, and it's for those reasons that we're proud uh, to have selected Karen Hill as a recipient of the CEO's award. So congratulations to Karen. And I wanna also let the board know that uh, these awards were identified by my predecessor, Emmett Heath. And when we recognized these employees a couple of weeks ago, we were joined by Emmett and he had an opportunity to speak to their tenure and their, and their performance over the last year. So again, congratulations to Karen. I'm not sure if Karen is joining us today. Um, do we know? Okay. I don't see her there. Well, let's move on to our second award winner, CEO award winner, and that's Jacob Peltier. Jacob is the manager of our security and emergency management. Um, and, and he's our second uh, CEO award winner. Uh, he has managed our COVID response, our emergency response efforts over the past year. Uh, and he oversees our transit police contract and our other safety and security programs. Um, since the very first days of the COVID-19 crisis, Jacob guided a well-coordinated response across all aspects of the agency. He's been a trusted source of crucial information for employees and partnered well with Snohomish County and our other external partners uh, to ensure consistency across an all hands response. Jacob had actually gotten a bit of a head start um, as a, a new employee laying the groundwork for our response, he developed our agency's emergency management plans prior to the pandemic, which gave us a really invaluable foundation to work from when things started breaking last year. Uh, he, uh, under the direction of Emmett and the executive team stood up our incident, incident command structure uh, and has served as our incident commander since, uh, since the beginning. Um, it's been said by many people that there isn't really a playbook for a pandemic, that no one knew uh, what to do when this came up because it hadn't been predicted. Um, people will argue with that. Obviously, some in the epidemiological community did predict it, but uh, due in part to Jacob's work, we had a playbook and we were ready to, to respond and, and we responded quickly. Um, I met Jacob on my second day on the job, um, and what I later learned I didn't know on that day was that as soon as he heard about my selection, uh, he reached out to Deb uh, to get a meeting on my calendar right away uh, and started thinking about everything I would need to know um, coming into the uh, organization to hit the ground running. Um, what I've noticed about Jacob over the past two months is his incredible earnestness in his responsiveness and his ability to command a broad range of, um, of, of detail and complexity in the various aspects of our response. Um, he listens incredibly well, he responds quickly, and he pays attention to each aspect uh, of our response to the, to the pandemic. Uh, it's not an easy place to be uh, as, a, as a member of the mid-management team uh, to work with the directors day in and day out, um, but he does it and he pulls it off and he does it well and the response uh, shows uh, his care. So thank you, Jacob. Um, I'm, I'm glad you're here today to be recognized in front of the board and uh, congratulations. So, now, I want to turn it over to former board chair, John Nearing. Uh, the board chair uh, award is his to present. And uh, so, Mayor Nearing, take it away. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, it's great to be able to present this award. The board chair award um, recognizes an employee or a team who exemplifies the highest quality of service and of commitment to community transit to our customers and all the communities that we serve. The 2020 Board Chair Award, uh, I want to announce goes to, uh, very deservedly so, to the Labor Relations Team. Um, and you see the, the photo in the, in the award, award, I believe, on, the, on some photos on the screen there. On this team, Sarah Burnett, Labor Relations Manager, and Carla Freeman, Labor Specialist, as you see there. Together, Sarah and Carla have worked to develop strong and positive union relationships stepping up proactively to meet the challenges of COVID-19. Uh, they both met 
with the unions daily in the earliest uh, days of the pandemic, <clears throat> and then regularly throughout the year to work through union concerns, implement solutions quickly, and coordinate with uh, the COVID incident command operations and maintenance staff, and to relay information and communications in a timely manner. Sarah, in her 16 years with Community Transit, um, has set just a great example of professionalism for those around her. As our labor relations manager, she is highly regarded and a trusted partner to both IAM and ATU union officials and employees across the agency. She consistently keeps the executive leadership team and our board's executive committee informed of significant uh, labor developments. And she sought input across the agency um, as a reliable and credible voice for uh, union topics. Carla has worked with Sarah for, I think, six years now, and uh, she's a labor relations specialist and has supported labor contract negotiations, employee communications, relationships with union leadership and employees represented by ATU and IAM, and coordinated topics and issues for discussion at labor management meetings. All of this she's done with the utmost professionalism and positivity. This past year, she volunteered to work on site during COVID-19 and to become the go-to person in many uh, areas outside of her job description. Her team relied on her to work through a flurry of COVID-related human resource changes and employee questions. And so Carla and Sarah, as you can see, performed professionally, positively, and effectively to tackle really pressing issues and to move forward in innovative ways to support our employees. And they did it all with their signature positive attitude and uh, courteous and respectful approach. And so it is really my honor on behalf of the entire board of directors here today to recognize their important contributions in 2020 by presenting them with the board chairs award. And thank you both, uh, Sarah and Carla, thank you both so much for all that you do and for all that you did in 2020. And I don't, uh, I'll leave it up to the CEO. I don't know, I see uh, Sarah and Carla there. So I, um, uh, we will obviously recognize them virtually here and I'll leave it up to the CEO. I don't know if there's anything else you wanna do on that behalf, but thank you both for what you've done. I, I think uh, Rachel's probably the moderator here, but uh, because this is a board recognition, uh, you know, if, if Sarah or Carla wanna say a few words in their own defense, uh, I think that would probably be appropriate. Thank you. Um, can, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. I just want to take a, a real brief moment here to just uh, express on behalf of Carla and myself how truly thankful we are to be recipients of this award and um, to just let this entire board know how thankful we are for all of you because you all have been nothing but supportive of all of the work that Carla and I have done together. And um, I just wanted to acknowledge that and let you all know that we are humbled and very appreciative of this recognition. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Nearing. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Carla, uh, Karen, and Jacob for your tremendous work and all the other award winners. Um, I mentioned earlier, for just on a personal note, I want to share that it was really uh, interesting and, and gratifying experience for me. I had no idea coming into the organization that we celebrate in this way. And, uh, and it was just so much fun, even in the times of COVID, to uh, go around the campus uh, with our masks and, and our, in our socially distant uh, celebrations and meet, uh, you know, via a combination of Zoom and and, and five people at a time in a conference room to, to hand out these uh, awards. Uh, really, it's a great, great feeling within the organization and, and um, um, just a, a real sign of our culture here. So I uh, can't wait till next year. So we are almost done, Mr. Chair, with our, uh, with our uh, celebrations, uh, but we have to honor someone else, one more person, a very special person. Uh, who's uh, demonstrated uh, incredible commitment and leadership over this past difficult year as chair of the board, and that is Mayor John Neri. So, Mayor Neri, <clears throat> we honor you today and thank you for your service as 2020 board chair. Uh, you are obviously the mayor of Marysville and you've been on the CT board uh, since 2010 when you joined as a large city representative. 
Uh, for most of that 11 years, you've been in a board officer role, including serving once before as board chair in 2016. Why you came back to do it again, I hope you'll tell us. Um, it was an incredibly challenging year. Uh, even observing from the outside, I, I couldn't imagine what it was like being here, um, not only with the pandemic, but with Emmett's retirement and a transition to plan, um, and being in the middle of the recruitment and the nature of the discussions in that process, uh, something that I will always remember. Uh, Mayor Nairing, you navigated these challenges uh, with skill, with professionalism, uh, with kind leadership, um, and uh, looked like you were enjoying it each step of the way, if you don't mind me saying. Um, you led the recruitment and selection process on behalf of the board. You made it a priority to keep employees in the middle of that process uh, and to do so transparently uh, with them and with your colleagues. Um, I know you're held in high esteem uh, by, by my peers and colleagues here in the organization um, for your approachable leadership style and your support of the staff and the mission of the organization. So, Mayor Nairing, former Chair Nairing, on behalf of Community Transit and the public we serve, I would like to thank you for your time, your commitment, and your passion for public service, and to ask you to please accept this award um, as a token of our appreciation. Uh, I'm, I'm sure at this point you probably now have a wall of gavels, and hopefully this one will find a, a distinctive place there uh, with the rest. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, very kind. I, I didn't expect that. Thank you, um, Rick. And, and uh, I would just say I did enjoy it. And uh, this, you know, outside of my city family here at Marysville, uh, I think I, I hold the community transit family as the, uh, as the, as the dearest in, in all my work here in the last um, uh, decade or so as mayor. And so, and, and that goes for the fellow board members here, just an incredibly committed group and, um, and the staff is just second to none. And uh, I just really appreciate you doing that and saying that. And, uh, but it was a pleasure for me and, and I'm really thrilled to have you on board. So thank you. So Mr. Chair, that concludes my remarks. So I'll pass it back to you. Well, thank you, Mr. Engelfritz. That was very well done. Thank you. And uh, thank you again to John Nearing for everything he's done. Okay, uh, Chief Executive Officer's report. I guess you're back on, uh, Mr. Fritz. <laughs> I guess I'm not done talking yet, huh? Okay. Well, I'll and try as, to- And as everybody has, you have three minutes. <laughs> I will expect to be cut off uh, if, I, if I drone past that. Thank you. Um, so thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board and members of the public listening along. I, I wanna start with a COVID-19 update. Um, First of all, on the, on the operational side, uh, we continue to offer a stable service level at about 85% of our pre-COVID service. Uh, ridership continues steady but low, uh, about 40% of pre-pandemic levels. Um, less on the commuter service with slightly higher ridership on the BRT service, no significant changes. From our last meeting, uh, we did start to see a very minor uptick in swift ridership after the holidays. Uh, took a bit of a dive during the snow event, but uh, overall things have remained fairly stable. Uh, on the financial side, we remain steady. Uh, sales tax is outperforming our conservative 2021 forecast. Uh, so we are watching that. Um, and we'll be keeping the board apprised of how that goes and whether there are any adjustments we might want to make. Um, we are engaged with the Puget Sound Regional Council and our partner transit agencies uh, on the next disbursement of federal assistance through the CRISA process. Uh, we're working to develop an allocation formula uh, for distribution of that second round of federal money uh, that would come to the Transportation Policy Board later this month, where Chair Daughtry is uh, our agency's representative and uh, Board Member Schwede is the alternative 
alternate, excuse me. Um, in addition, we're watching uh, also at the federal level, the development of the American Rescue Package um, that would have potentially a third round of federal assistance. Uh, bill has passed the House, it's currently on the Senate floor. Uh, it looks like it may have a significant component for further investment in transit. Uh, maybe not just service, but also potentially infrastructure. Um, I did decide to uh, extend uh, premium pay for another month. It was due to expire March 6th. Uh, so I've extended that to April 3rd. Um, we are keeping a close eye on the Snohomish County COVID case report. Uh, and the vaccine rate as potential measures uh, of when it will be appropriate to conclude premium pay. Um, I've asked uh, Cesar Portillo and our team to, to uh, look into those metrics and advise, advise me accordingly. Um, employees remain vigilant following safety guidelines. In terms of cases, we had four positive cases in February. Uh, and one so far in March. Um, there's no immediate indication those were related uh, to work. Um, and overall, the, the case trend for CT seems to be consistent with that of the county and, and headed in a downward trajectory. Um, at our last board meeting, several of you uh, inquired about community transit helping provide access to vaccine sites. Um, so the staff has been looking into that. And I've got a few things I wanted to feed back to the board. Um, and it's, uh, well, I'll just, I'll just run through what we've learned and, and, and what we're doing. And, and this will be something that we continue to monitor and manage uh, in real time. Um, most of the vaccination sites uh, are currently drive-through sites where individuals remain in their personal vehicles. Uh, and are not walk-up sites. So this creates uh, complications from the, from the standpoint of using public transit. Um, the site at Arlington Airport is one of these, is a drive-through site. Um, however, a new walk-up site uh, is opening tomorrow at the Angel of the Winds Arena in Everett. And we will be providing a shuttle uh, from the nearby parking area to the arena entrance uh, to help people uh, with mobility issues to get safely from the parking area to the arena. Um, I think most of you are probably familiar with the grade, uh, the, the hills in that area. So this will allow people to walk into the building, get a vaccine and then be um, transported back to where their vehicles are. Uh, that's also in proximity to uh, um, uh, our SWIFT service and the Everett uh, Transit Center. Uh, we're also discussing actively uh, providing a future shuttle from Seaway Transit Center to the Boeing um, mass vaccine site when the supply of vaccine increases to the point um, that on-site parking at Boeing will not be able to accommodate uh, the projected load. Um, so again, that's something we're going to watch in real time. It, it's sounding more and more like the vaccine supply is going to pick up very quickly. So uh, we have a number of people watching that and preparing to, to respond. Um, we have evaluated how our services overlap with current vaccine sites, uh, including pharmacies across the county, and we're confident that we've got bus stops uh, within a short walk of the majority of sites. So we don't see any major gaps uh, as far as that goes vis-a-vis uh, -vis our current network and the types of shuttle activities I've described here. Um, but we're talking with the Snohomish County Vaccine Task Force uh, about uh, some more remote communities that may not have frequent transit service to see whether there are some things we can do there uh, to make sure anyone who, who wants a vaccine uh, has the ability to get to it. Um, we're incorporating information into our trip planning tool that will allow customers to plan trips to vaccine sites uh, that accept walk-in appointments. Um, and in collaboration with Everett Transit, we're actively participating in the, in the vaccine task force uh, and have offered to uh, use of our buses and paratransit vehicles as may be needed uh, to assist. Um, right now, we're currently providing free paratransit trips uh, to, to DART customers um, who 
make appointments and, and want to use that service uh, to get to their vaccine appointment. So that's a quick run through of, of what we're doing to make sure we've got connectivity to vaccine locations. Um, I wanted to say a little bit uh, by way of conclusion on the COVID report uh, about uh, employees returning to the base. Um, we had um, been planning, and uh, you know, this dates back to last year, uh, an April, early April return to base. Um, given how the cases have gone, uh, we made the decision this week to adjust uh, to set a goal of July 6th uh, for bringing employees back to base. Um, this is based largely on the news from the federal government uh, that it looks like there will be enough vaccine inventory to cover everybody by the end of May. Um, so that, that would be the projected timeline for Washington State under the Healthy Washington uh, Recovery Plan to move into phase four. So there's a lot of assumptions behind, behind that coming back July 6th, but that, that's our goal. Uh, and we'll be working um, you know, with our employees, obviously, and our partner agencies to, to plan that transition and, and uh, give our employees as much flexibility as possible um, to keep themselves and their families healthy between now and then. So that concludes my COVID report. A couple of highlights of my onboarding activities as your new CEO. Um, you may recall I've been focused about half time externally and about half time internally, uh, running through some of the outreach activities I've been engaged in. I've been continuing to try to ride the bus uh, once a week or once every couple of weeks. Um, we, uh, last week, I had an opportunity to ride the bus out to Lake Stevens with Roland and meet with Chair Daughtry uh, and the mayor uh, to get a tour of the city and spend some time uh, at the transit center and looking at our service uh, there vis-a-vis uh, -vis the city's plans and some of the ongoing projects in the arterial grid in Lake Stevens. Um, and then just this week, uh, he and I rode the 202 up to Arlington and met with board member Schwetti um, and toured the Cascade Industrial Center uh, on the Arlington side of the boundary. And it was really quite revealing. Um, I'd heard about it from a number of you and uh, it was really something to get up there and see how much development is going on <clears throat> and how robust the, <laughs> the economic uh, opportunity is there uh, responding to the, to the industrial center. So. Lots to do there, lots to think about as we as we look ahead uh, to the transit market up in that area that is gonna continue to grow clearly. Um, and I've got more bus trips planned. I'm heading up to um, Stanwood next to meet with board member Roberts um, and uh, over to Muckleteo to meet with board member Marine. So I'll, I'll work my way through the district, hopefully um, over the next month. Um, in terms of partners uh, and um, uh, stakeholders outside the organizations. Uh, the organization, I had a meeting with APTA President Paul Scatellis um, the week before last uh, to, to, to sort of get welcomed into the APTA community, and that was great. We've got a couple of friends at APTA, and it was, it was fun to reconnect with them um, and coordinate uh, with, with them. There are vast resources available there at APTA to inform how we respond to COVID and how we're planning to come out of it. Uh, and also um, what's happening with the federal government. Met with Senator Hobbs um, and uh, had an opportunity to brief him uh, on our priorities and, and have a conversation with him uh, to kind of round it out the series of meetings I've had with state legislators. Uh, just yesterday, met with Senator Cantwell's staff and uh, had an opportunity to answer their questions about how COVID has gone here in the region for a CT. Um, and um, they, they were really informative about what's happening on the federal side and really appreciative of the work we've done um, and looking ahead to uh, you know this, this uh, federal infrastructure package. So good productive discussions there. And again, like most of these meetings, you know, looking ahead to a time when we can get together in person. Um, had a meeting with Mayor Cassie Franklin of Everett um, and had some conversation about the Rethink Everett process. I wanted to flag, uh, that was a great get acquainted session. Um, 
the, the city staff you may have heard uh, is has been directed by the council to take the alternatives for the future of ever transit out for public comment over the next couple of months and uh, they will be soliciting public input on three different alternatives uh, one of which is a proposed merger with community transit uh, and then reporting that feedback uh, back to the city council uh, in may so we'll be continuing to follow that closely and support them uh, as needed last week was the washington state transit association legislative conference and as i alluded to a minute ago we met uh, again there with Senator Fai and, or excuse me, Senator Hobbs and Chairman Fai, uh, some other legislators, uh, representatives of the governor's office, uh, FTA, uh, and some delegation staffers, including uh, Senator Murray's staff. Um, and it was just a great opportunity to coordinate um, with our peer agencies around the state and providing input to the legislature on the development of potential new revenue packages um, and to get better acquainted with some of my peers. Um, I had my first meeting as a new board member of the Economic Alliance of Snohomish County, um, and we got to meet the new CEO, Gary, there. Uh, so that's going to be a great opportunity for more networking. Uh, also joined the Skit board with board member Schwetti, um, invited by Andy Thompson, and uh, we've got a, uh, an event next week with them where we'll be talking about transit. Um, Getting close to the end here on the external stuff. I had a radio interview earlier this week with my peers at King County Metro and Pierce Transit. Um, they wanted to do a segment on how transit is responding to the pandemic and how we're thinking about um, um, trying to earn back ridership as the pandemic uh, phases out and vaccines phase in. So that was a good opportunity to, to talk uh, with KUOW about how we coordinate with each other and what we've experienced and, and how we're planning for the fall. Um, just a few things uh, to highlight internally and then I'll wrap up, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm continuing with some deep dive briefings on our lines of business and operations. Um, I've had meetings with our contracted service providers. I've had deep briefings on our procurement process and policies, our planning cycle, our budget process. Uh, we've got an executive leadership team workshop next week on uh, key performance indicators and uh, finalizing an agency scorecard that we can integrate into our budget process. It will help provide you uh, with you know, key performance indicators of how we're doing across the various aspects of our mission. Um, I had a great meeting with the leadership of the ATU a couple of weeks back and also with the IAM. And I'll be meeting soon with the shop stewards and I've been getting really good input um, and um, starting to create some relationships on, on that level. Um, lastly, I wanna mention our diversity, equity and inclusion initiative. As you may know, uh, Emmett initiated the DEI initiative uh, part of, as part of his uh, final um, tour last year, and we've been carrying through on that. We've engaged a facilitator at the executive team level uh, to guide us through uh, a training process of understanding uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and how it can um, be a major tool in leadership and in developing and fostering an inclusive agency culture. Um, part of that initiative was also creating a new position uh, within the organization, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Program Manager. So we'll have a dedicated staff person to focus on these issues and, and bring these thoughts and, and ideas to each aspect of our business. So the agency went through a competitive recruitment process and I'm pleased to, to inform you today, if you didn't see the announcement online yesterday, uh, that Nishika Stanbro was selected and started this week uh, in that position. Uh, Nishika is here today, and I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce her to those of you who may not know her uh, from her role as Community Transit's Public Information Officer. Uh, she's served in that role for the past two years, working in the Communications and Public Affairs Department, uh, and she's been on point as our crisis communicator throughout the pandemic, uh, supporting the incident command structure, 
And we are very pleased that she has taken on this new role as the agency's first uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion program manager. Uh, she's an experienced and professional communicator. She has respect throughout the organization and has been an equity champion with strong ties to organizations throughout the county, uh, including a network of professionals with expertise in this area. So I want to congratulate her uh, on her promotion, welcome her to this role. Um, and if you're open to it, uh, Chair Daughtry, uh, let her say a few words of introduction herself. You bet. Shika, you're on. Hey. Welcome. Um, thank you so much. Um, I grew up writing community transit and as an employee, I am deeply committed to this agency, my colleagues and our customers. It's really an honor to step into this new role and build upon the great work that has already began community transit to meet the needs of our employees and the communities we serve. So thank you. Great, thank you. So Mr. Chair, by my watch, it's, it's 3.50 and I think I've been talking for about 45 minutes. So I'd like to uh, conclude my report and turn it back over to you. Okay, thank you. You actually just hit the three minute mark, so pretty good. <laughs> uh, next day we have on our agenda, we have a committee report, so I will uh, report out the executive committee first. Um, we met on Thursday, February 18th, uh, board uh, member Schwede, Marine, Mayor Nering and I attended where we received a CEO provided report to the executive committee on several subjects such as the COVID as he's already explained to us this day. The next executive committee meeting is scheduled for March 18th at 11.30 a.m. Uh, the next one would be the Finance Performance and Oversight Committee, Council Member Schwede. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Um, the Finance Performance and Oversight Committee met on Thursday, February the 18th, 2021 via Zoom, CEO Rick uh, Elgin Fritz, other agency staff and board members, Tom Merrill, Sid Roberts, Jared Mead, and I attended. On the consent agenda, approval of January 2021 expenditures and payroll items B through G uh, reports, the first report on uh, sales tax for January. This report reflects purchases made in November. In January, community transit collected approximately 13.7 million in sales tax, which was approximately 4.2 million more than budgeted. Uh, January 2021 diesel fuel report. Year to date through January, community transit paid an average of $1.67 per gallon for diesel fuel compared to the 2021 budget amount of $1.75 per gallon. This is a positive variance of 0.8 cents per gallon. The budget team continues to monitor fuel costs. The next finance performance and oversight committee meeting is scheduled for 2 p.m. Thursday, March 18th via Zoom. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Schwede. Next will be the Strategic Alignment and Capital Development Committee. Uh, Council Member uh, Marine. All right, thank you very much. So the Strategic Alignment and Capital Development Committee meeting was held remotely with everyone hermetically sealed in their respective boxes over Zoom on Wednesday, the 7th, February 17th at two o'clock. Uh, in attendance was myself, uh, Council Member Tom Merrill, Labor Representative Lance Norton, Mayor Nicholas Smith, and Council Member Stephanie Wright. Uh, the committee reviewed and forwarded three items for action at today's Board of Directors meeting. First is ITB number 2021-014 MCOB maintenance improvement project. That's a hoist purchase. Uh, the item is for award of 14 bus hoists to accommodate the expansion of the bus maintenance facility during phase 3A of the agency's facilities master plan. The cost was not to exceed the amount of $3,014,079. In addition to 14 new hoists, the cost includes installation, commissioning, and load testing and a presentation will be made to the board later in the meeting. Also RFQ 2017-079, task order for MCOB maintenance improvement project, construction management services. The item is for approval of construction management oversight during phase three of the agency's facilities master plan. Staff will give a brief presentation to the board and answer any questions also later in the meeting. Uh, finally, there was SS number 2021-15, 
open trip planning for digital strategy. And this item provides enhancements and hosting of the agency's bus trip planner for an amount of 180,000. And staff will give a detailed presentation also at today's board meeting. Uh, two informational items were heard at February's committee meeting. The committee received an informational update on the Linwood pilot project, which is re-engaging with the community after a pause during the COVID pandemic. Building on the earlier needs assessment, the project is now moving into solution development and the board will receive a full update at a future meeting. Um, and then finally, staff provided a briefing at the upcoming service change. On March 21st, the agency will implement minor schedule adjustments and 24 additional trips on local routes, providing capacity to maintain social distancing and reducing wait time for customers. Our next regu regularly scheduled meeting is going to be Wednesday, the 17th of March at 2 p.m. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Member Marine. So at this time, I would entertain a motion for the consent agenda. So moved. Second. I'm sorry, I missed who the second was. John Nearing. Oh, John Nearing. Okay, sorry. Thanks, John. So I have a motion and a second for the consent agenda. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Pass unanimously. Thank you very much. Muted, so there you go, we'll do this again. Action items ITV 2021-014, uh, the MCOB maintenance improvements project hoist purchases. Greg Stamatiao, did I get that right? Did I even get close? No. Yeah, I'll give a, I can give a brief, brief introduction, uh, Chair Daughtry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Please bail me out of this. Sure, sure. So um, yeah, just very briefly, uh, as we previously shared with the board, um, we've been, uh, making great progress on building out the facility master plan, um, the upgrade and expansion of our facilities to support future growth. And we're really excited to bring two action items to the board today, uh, as, uh, as Council Member Marine described uh, in the committee report. These represent an important milestone. We're moving from the design phase into the construction phase for phase 3A, um, which is the, the maintenance shop part of the project. And uh, Greg Stamadio is our capital development program manager. And uh, Greg has been the overall project manager for the facility master plan, and he's going to provide background on both items A and B on your action agenda. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to discuss this with you all today. I'd like to quickly thank uh, Larry Dalvin Meyer and our capital team and Rhonda Walgren with our procurement team who helped facilitate these two contracts uh, that we'll be presenting to you today. Um, we are bringing forth two contracts for the facilities master plan, one for a purchase of hoist 14 new in-ground Sturtle Coney Eco 90 lifts. These are permanent in-ground lifts that our mechanics use to lift the coaches for maintenance and repair. Out of the 14, eight of these lifts will be used to replace existing hoists within our current shops, and these have <laughs> met their shelf life. We have six additional hoists that will be added into um, additional capacity in a new building addition and we will give better details um, to follow on some renderings coming up in the presentation. Within this contract we'll also be purchasing one single mobile hoist, a model ST1085, that can move, be moved throughout the base and is not stationary and provide flexibility for use with our maintenance team. The overall contract will be approximately three million dollars. The second contract is a construction management consultant contract to Vayner Construction Management, and this will provide support and augment our community transit project management team with document compliance, oversight, resolution of issues, inspection of work, reviewing, processing, and tracking construction documents, including submittals, RFIs, and change orders for approximately $1.7 million. Both of these contracts are in preparation and support for a future public works contract that will be coming back to you for approval this spring or summer for the beginning of construction for the facility master plan phase 3A. 
We're going to give you a quick summary of the facilities master plan and a reminder of how these contracts fit within the overall facilities master plan 3A and that aligns within the program. So if you could go to the next slide, Rachel. The facility master plan uh, will provide or allow capacity growth, improved system reliability, and added overall flexibility that is needed by Community Transit to execute its mission going forward. There are four phases and five distinct projects currently within the program. The first phase, the Cash Park Casino Road, which is building a new construction administration headquarters at Casino Road and is currently in construction looking to be completed late this year with move-in of admin staff early in 2022. The second phase is the Merrill Creek Administration Building Renovation, which will be uh, at, at completion, will convert that building to a transportation operations um, building. Phase three will be segmented into two phases. The 3A contract is the one we're focusing in on today, um, which will provide maintenance expansion and generally uh, is located west of the Great Hall. And Facilities Master Plan 3B will renovate the offices, generally everything east of the Great Hall. The last phase is the renovation of Cash Park. Next, next slide, please. This is the overall program schedule. We're not gonna to dive too much into the level of detail for the other projects. Um, we've uh, discussed Casino Road is in construction and on track to be completed late this year with move-in early next. And phase two will uh, begin right after uh, that project is completed. Um, we'll spend most of our details discussion today on phase 3A. We are wrapping up design and that will be completed by middle of this year. As I mentioned before, we'll be coming back to you with a public works contract and award um, looking to do so middle of this year, summer. The anticipated construction timeline for the facilities master plan 3A is a little over three years. And I know at a, at a snapshot, people are like, well, why would this take so long? Um, the reasoning behind that, uh, such length on that project is due to the constraints um, we're going to be placing on our contractor to keep maintenance levels serviceable um, during construction and doing construction at an active base so that we don't lose service to our coaches and uh, our fleet. Next slide, please, Rachel. So the level of detail I wanted to point out for the Facilities Master Plan 3A project, we'll begin the project looking at the, um, from the left to the right, you'll see there a new addition, um, bolded and flagged. This addition is approximately 105 feet addition to the far western side of our existing maintenance building. Uh, at the end of completion of the 105 foot addition, we'll be adding six new maintenance bays with Sturtle Coney lifts as mentioned before in the purchase contract. Once that additional capacity is completed in the initial phase, we will then take down half of the existing shops, which is into the center of the building, um, four bays at a time for a total replacement of eight existing hoists with new Sturtle Coney lips. The benefits of the 3A project is maintenance capacity within the overall system, Maintenance flexibility by retrofitting the entire Merrill Creek base, including the maintenance bays, paint shops, body shops, fuel island, chassis wash, uh, and at completion, we'll be able to accommodate the entire community transit fleet, including double talls, which Merrill Creek cannot currently accommodate. Finally, we'll be adding maintenance storage offices and bathrooms within the maintenance shops. In summary, we are recommending the award of two contracts for facilities master plan 3A, a purchase contract of 14 new eco, eco um, excuse me, Sturtle Coney Eco 90 lifts and a single mobile hoist purchase of an ST1085 for an overall prox approximate contract value of $3 million. We're also recommending a award of a construction management consultant contract to Vayner Construction Management for project support and augmentation of the CT project management team for construction compliance and oversight. This will be an approximate contract of $1.7 million. And I wanted to clarify that the delta between the 2.5 initial proposal to the 1.7 negotiated contract amount is due to two factors. One, for we negotiated um, the fees to a lower amount. And secondly, we aligned our consultant's scope of work with the assumptions of CT's needs as the consultant assumed a body of work that CT will be providing with internal staff. 
that's my presentation. If you have any questions, please let me know. Oh, yeah, thank you, Rachel. That's the second picture that shows the addition on the on the for, far northern side. Are there any questions? Go ahead, Mike. And Greg, thanks for the presentation. On those in-ground lifts, are they post hoist, platform hoist, or scissor lifts? I will defer to Larry Dobbenmeyer within our capital development team to answer that. My apologies. Uh, I'll take that. They're, they're, they're post hoist, uh, they're axle lifts, uh, is what we're installing for all. For all, all our post hoist. Thank you, Larry. That's correct, yes. At, at post axle hoist. hoist. Yes. All right. Any other questions for the presenters? Seeing none. Um, I'll make a motion, Chair, if you like. This is Nicola. I think the chair is muted. Go ahead. Um, uh, you made a motion, Nicola. Thank you very much. I, I will. Okay. <laughs> I recommend that the Board of Directors authorize the Chief Executive Officer to negotiate an award 14 new stair stair Coney Eco-90 hoists and one set of wireless mobile lift columns utilizing Washington State contract number 05316, which is the ITB number 2021-014 with stair Coney or its authorized agent for the MCOB maintenance improvements project. This purchase will include installation, commissioning, load testing, and training for a total not to exceed the amount of $3,014,079.56. Second. Second. Okay, I have a second by uh, Councilmember Schwede. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all for all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passed unanimously. So the second one that was presented was RFQ 2017-079 task order for the MCOB maintenance improvements project. I'd entertain a motion. All right, I, uh, Chair, I will move that the board of directors authorize the chief executive officer to negotiate and award a task order. Under RFQ 217-079 to Veneer Construction Management Incorporated for a not to exceed amount of $1,791,998.31 for construction management services for the MCOB maintenance improvements project. Second. I'm sorry, I missed who the second was. Was that Mr. Merrill? No. Mr. Merrill. Thank you. Any other discussion on this motion? Seeing none, I would entertain your vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Passed you now. Thank you. We'll go on to the next one, Mr. Behe. Behe. Yes, Chair. Um, so uh, over the past two years, supported the agency's work to develop a multi-year digital strategy. That's to improve the experience of our customers and to help make travel easy for all. A recent focus of, uh, within the strategy has been the upgrade and improvement of our online trip planning capability. Uh, Brian Valine is our digital product owner within the agency, and Brian's been leading this work. He's here to provide background on action item C on your calendar regarding open trip planning. Thank you, Roland. I'm happy to be here. Um, I also want to recognize Jay Heim uh, in IT, who was instrumental in the Open Trip Planner pilot in getting us to this point. So what I'd like to do today is share the results of our Open Trip Planner pilot and make a recommendation as it relates to the digital strategy. Rachel, if you could move to the next slide, please. So as Roland outlined in what is uh, important in this initiative as well is how it ties to our mission. We help people get from where they are to where they want to be and our vision, travel made easy for all. Uh, the trip planner is very important 
um, to our company. Next slide, please. Uh, first of all, some background on our existing trip planner. Next slide. So the current trip planner, as I understand it, predates me, uh, goes back to 2003 and is almost 20 years old. Um, in that period of time, we have built a robust landmark database. And we have found value in the agent user interface uh, that our call center uses to interface with customers uh, who call in with uh, questions related to trip planning. We've also had an opportunity to integrate um, Orca into the trip planner. And during this time, consistently, uh, trip planner is one of our three most top visited web pages and continues to be so today. Next slide. However, we also recognize that there are some unmet customer needs. And when you think about a trip planner that is nearly 20 years old and based on a technology architecture that dates to the late 90s and hasn't been updated since, uh, it's time to consider a change. Uh, some of the things that our customers are asking for and are missing from our current trip planning experience is real-time data. Imagine the rider alerts, the uh, diversions that we set up or bus stop closures that we announce. Um, none of those appear in trip plans today. Uh, think also of how uh, ubiquitous uh, Google Maps are and how users interface um, on a map. Uh, with our current trip planner, you can't plan a trip on a map by selecting the origin and destination. It's also interesting to note that when we look at uh, the data and metrics on our current trip planner, consistently about 30% of the planned trips that customers um, try to plan fail on their first try. And all of these combined together leading to the change that's coming in 2024, uh, lead me to make a recommendation that uh, we consider different ways to uh, meet our customers' needs than our current trip planning experience offers, because virtually everyone is going to have to plan a new trip when light rail arrives. Next slide, please. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about Open Trip Planner. Next slide. So we had the opportunity to conduct a three-month pilot project last year. We hired IBI Group to configure an open source product called Open Trip Planner for Community Transit. Before we got started, we socialized it with other agencies, and we followed up with some of those agencies at the conclusion of the pilot as well. The pilot was tested with customers. Um, during the period of August through November, they had an opportunity to provide feedback through a feedback tab that we had on the website. Uh, we also directly solicited feedback from customers through customer interviews, and we did some usability testing with a prototype. And then we analyzed all that data. Next slide, please. What we learned is that customers do want real-time data. They also are excited about the opportunity to plan multimodal trips. And they do seek the ability to plan trips on a map. And the good news is Open Trip Planner has all of these features built in. Next slide. But to succeed, we also realize that we need the same robust database of landmarks that we've been able to build over the last almost 20 years. The agent user interface that our call center depends upon um, is something that we would need to get through an additional module called Call Taker. It's an application that adds on to Open Trip Planner. And we also recognize that Orca Fair integration is integral as well. 
Now, these features were not available in Open Trip Planner out of the box, but the good news is they can all be added to it. Next slide, please. So this leads me to my recommendation. Next slide. We are currently actively working on a website redesign. And what I'm recommending is that as part of our redesign, we integrate Open Trip Planner with it. Now, as I outlined um, in my presentation, there are some areas that we need to enhance Open Trip Planner, namely the Orca Fair integration and building a robust database of landmarks. We also recognize that the call taker module to replace our user agent user interface is critical as well. And these added enhancements will cost $100,000. On top of that, projects of this nature typically include the first year of support and hosting. And this project would be no different. That's an additional $85,000. So what we're looking at is a total budget of $185,000. But I have more good news, and that is these costs are covered by the approved digital strategy budget. Next slide, please. So what I'm here to recommend today is that we award a contract to IBI Group for the enhancements that I outlined, the call taker module, and the first year of support and hosting. And this will be through a sole source contract with TriMet. Uh, TriMet, a leader in our industry, has uh, already been working with IBI Group on their trip planner. And this is uh, a project not to exceed $185,000. Are there any questions? Thank you, Brian. Any questions for Brian? Boy, a talkative group today. <laughs> Chair, I'd like to make a motion that the board of directors authorize the chief executive officer, officer to negotiate and award an open trip planner work based on TriMet sole source contract number ST 1843ZC, uh, which is SS 2021 015 to the IBI Group Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $185,000. Second. Who was the second? Joe Marine, did you make it? Yes, sir. Okay, we have a first and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passed unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Verlaine. We appreciate Thank giving you. us a presentation. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, we have the chair's report. And seeing how it's my first one, I'm going to take the entire three minutes. <laughs> first, Mayor Nering. Thank you for your service to this board and the community for your services last year's chair. I have been a part of CT board for almost 10 years. And I know that I'm trying to fill some very large shoes from all the past chairs. And uh, I'm glad you're still there so you can help me through this when I have questions. And certainly we've already had a couple of phone calls to, to help me out. So thank you very much. Also, I'd like to thank the board uh, for selecting me to the position. I'll do my best to live up to the expectations of each of you. And please know that I'm always available to you at all times. And I'm looking forward to a prosperous year. And to the Board of Directors, thank you for your service to the community transit and to the community. Only we truly know what it means to serve, even if every one of us has a different reason for that service. And thank you to the community transit staff, all of them. You each are the epitome of professionalism, and it shows to whomever chances to look. I'd like to also thank Council Member Schwede for serving this year as the chair of the Finance Performance and Oversight Committee as well as Council Member Marine for serving as a chair of the Strategic Alignment and Capital Development Committee. And that concludes my report. Did I take three minutes on that? Wow, jeez. Uh, let's open up to board communications. Um, Mayor Nearing. 
Well, thank you, uh, Councilmember Daughtry, and looking forward to your year as uh, board chair. And uh, thanks to everybody. Um, appreciate the kind words and uh, good meeting today. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Gallagher, do you have anything you'd like to speak with? All right, uh, Council Member Schwede. Uh, I would just like to uh, thank again, uh, Rick, Roland and Deb for coming out to Arlington to look at the Manufacturing Industrial Center uh, with the amount of jobs and the buildings going up. It's really hard to imagine until you can see it. Uh, but on a little lighter side, uh, Deb did notice my license plate on my car and it's BRT. Does that fit or what? <laughs> Thank you, Jan. Mr. Merrill. Nothing for me today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Merrill. And Council Member uh, Marine. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I would like to, uh, first of all, thank all the, uh, um, or congratulate all the employees who got their awards today. That was uh, very, very cool to be a part of and hear a little bit about more about their story. Also excited to um, go around Michael Tia with Rick tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning and uh, hopefully the weather, weather will be good. Uh, I need to show him exactly where we need to put that park and ride lot. So we, we, so leave a little extra time uh, for that. And uh, also a big thank you to Mayor Nering. Um, it's just a pleasure to be working with him again. And I've had the opportunity over the years to work in a few different positions, different boards with him and uh, a consummate professional and leader and certainly uh, on the one of the top of my list uh, when it comes to regional leaders here in Snohomish County. So yeah, a very, very big thank you, uh, Mayor Mary, for putting your time in. And uh, Council Member Schwede, I just wanted to say, you gotta be careful a little bit. Um, uh, it was a number of years ago that I took the opportunity to put a license plate frame on uh, the former mayor of uh, Marysville, or excuse me, of Mount Lake Terrace, Jerry Smith, that said, my favorite city, Muckleteo. I think he drove around for like two or three months with that on his car before he realized. <laughs> so, so you gotta be careful where you park. And that's all, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Marine. Uh, Council Member Stephanie Wright. No comments today, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Roberts. It's all good in Stanwood, thank you. Great, Council, I mean, Mayor Smith. Thank you. Um, Rick, I think you've done an excellent job hitting the ground running as we suspected you would. So um, don't wear yourself out early in the game here. You've got a long haul to go. <laughs> and also Nashika, congratulations on your position. Uh, and if you have any inclined to uh, come and meet up with my race and social justice team, please feel free to reach out and ask for that. And they're also meeting with the county execs team. So uh, it's kind of a nice, uh, way to collaborate and, and figure out how we can move these move this important work forward together. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor Smith. Uh, Labor Representative Lance Norton. Mr. Norton, you're muted. I wonder if we lost Mr. Norton. Let's move on to Mayor Kyoko Matsumoto Wright. All I can say is that um, as someone who's tried to go through the, the trip planner, I'm so glad we're gonna get a new one, a new version. I, I think that was the highlight of this because I have suffered so much. And then when I tried to uh, work it out with some of my fellow bus riders from King County, they said, oh, we never use that one. We use this, this one. And then, you know, all the other apps and everything that we get um, are different. So anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you. Finally, I think we'll get something that works. Thank you, Mayor Matsuda, right? Uh, did I miss anybody? Tried to get Lance Norton, are you still, are you online? Yeah, can you hear me, uh, Mr. Chair? Yep, we can hear you now. You go ahead and and uh, bring any of your comments. No, I have none. I just want to thank you for allowing me to speak earlier in the meeting. 
I have nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Lance. Appreciate it. Okay, so uh, board, that was board communications. We have no need for executive session. Is that correct? Um, any other business to be brought to the board? Anybody? Crickets. Okay, then I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks. See you. Thanks, everyone.